Before leaving, please remember to make a contribution to all of my uh, thousands of hours of work uh, uh, here, uh, PayPal, Patreon, or fundraiser in the description below or on the China Rising Radio Sino Land art article page. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Today's podcast and article uh, are entitled, She and Putin Tell the West to Go to Hell. Mao Zedong's worldview now rules in both countries and beyond. Pictured above, Western hubris and arrogance know no bounds. The good news is, thanks to Ukraine, those days are rapidly coming to a close. Here we go. Ukraine is an historical tipping point like World War I and II. Those two horrific Western planned infernos were to decide which imperial countries were going to carve up the developing world and where. Today's tipping point is good news for planet Earth, which is forever changed for the better, much, much better for the global 99%. The summary of talking points shown by CNBC says it all. Baba Beijing, its 1.4 billion citizens, Russia's leadership, and its 144 million citizens are saying to hell with Uranglo-Land's 500-year colonial, imperial, and genocidal domination of the world's natural and human resources. So are many more countries. Mao Zedong said it best. He was one of 20th century's great visionaries, and few understood Uranglo-Land like he did. And an image says, the day will come when the U.S. reactionaries find themselves opposed by the peoples of the world. Mao Zedong. I have always said that even Chinese who are not wild about Mao agree with his worldview. Global capitalism is evil, global imperialism is evil, and they both must be defended against and defeated. Thanks to the Ukraine war, which was started by Western capitalism and imperialism in 2014, Mao's witches are being brought to fruition. The Occidental pox on humanity, with its millennial six E's of racism, expansionism, extermination, expropriation, extraction, enslavement, and evangelism, is starting to unravel. After 500 years of slaughtering billions of humanity's 99% and stealing their natural resources in the trillions of dollars and euros, your Anglo lands decline and fall will now pick up pace, something I've been writing about and reporting on for years. Be that as it may, equipped with their reptile brains and that same old tired playbook, their arrogance still knows no bounds. Here is what the USA says happened during Biden's and Xi's two-hour video call this week. I quote, U.S. President Joe Biden spoke to Xi Jinping on Friday, warning the Chinese leader not to provide material support to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a day after Biden's top diplomat acknowledged that Washington believed Beijing is willing to provide such support. The video call, the first conversation between the two leaders since the invasion, lasted almost two hours, according to the White House. In the call, Biden detailed the potential, quote, implications and consequences, end of quote, should Beijing move to provide material support. Administration officials refused to publicly detail what those consequences might be. It is clear by the CNBC summary that Biden's bully boy chest beating will no longer work. China's anti-Western imperialist brother in arms is adding weight to this historical tipping point. Here is Russia, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov to the question, why couldn't the situation with Ukraine be resolved peacefully? His answer, I quote, because the West did not want to solve this situation by peaceful means. This is not about Ukraine at all, or rather not so much about Ukraine, but about the world legal order. The United States took over the whole of Europe. 
Under Biden, the United States set itself the task of subjugating Europe and achieving its unquestioning adherence to the American course. The current crisis is a fateful moment. This is an epical moment in modern history. It reflects the battle over what the world order will look like. A misunderstood sense of one's own infinite superiority also prevails in the situation that we are considering. Building a world in which the West will lead everything with impunity and unquestioningly. There's a lot of speculation that Russia is being pushed right now because it is the last hurdle to get past before China gets involved. This is simply said, but there is serious truth to it. Why couldn't it be solved by peace? We have been proposing to solve this amicably for many years. End of quote by Foreign Minister Lavrov. In other words, your Anglo land cannot destroy China without destroying Russia first. The West's downfall will be that it cannot destroy China, cannot destroy Russia without destroying China first. Neither will happen. Checkmate. Lavrov has further expounded on Urangoland's desperate attempts to maintain its 500-year globocop sodomization. I quote, Russia is under no illusion it can rely on the West again. The West is completely dominated by the United States, and the European Union is largely powerless. If there was any illusion that we could one day rely on our Western partners, this illusion is no longer there. Moscow will never accept a world order dominated by the United States. What the Americans want is a unipolar world which would not be like a global village, but like an American village. Many countries such as China, India, and Brazil do not want to be ordered around by, quote, Uncle Sam, end of quote, acting like a sheriff seeking to call the shots in a saloon bar. Wow. End of quote by uh, Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov. I am sure the cabinets of Biden, Johnson, Macron, Schultz, Trudeau, Morrison, Ardern, Kishida, and all their fellow imperial ventriloquist dummies saw this publication entitled Joint Statement of the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation on International Relations and Global Sustainable Development in the New Era. It was released all over Russia, Russian and Chinese media on 4 February 2022 20 days before Russia decided to put an end to the Ukraine, the Ukraine war, started by Urangloland Land in 2014. These Western tools of the 1% of course saw it, but they were blinded by their Western sixes of racism. Here is the executive summary and then the full 16-page statement to download below. And I'm going to read it out to you because I think it is extremely important for people out, you know, inside the Great Western Firewall to understand this. 4 February 2022, TASS issued its selection of key points from the 16-page document. First subset, relations between Moscow and Beijing. The new type of Ch Russian-Chinese relations surpasses the military-political alliances of the Cold War. Friendship between the two states has no limits. There are no forbidden areas of cooperation. Strengthening of bilateral strategic cooperation is neither aimed against third countries nor affected by the changing international environment and circumstantial changes in third countries. Moscow points to the positive significance of the Chinese concept of a community with common destiny for mankind. And Beijing highlights the positive role of Russian efforts to form a fair, multipolar system of international relations. Russia and China intend to intensify the integration of the development plans of the Eurasian Economic Union, the EAEU, and the Belt and Road Initiative, and will strengthen cooperation within the framework of multilateral mechanisms, including the UN. 
Moscow and Beijing will increase cooperation in the development and production of vaccines and drugs against coronavirus. They oppose the, politiz- the politicization of the origin of the new infection. It is a, quote, matter of science, end of quote. The parties intend to firmly uphold the inviability of the results of the Second World War and the established post-world order and resist attempts to distort and falsify its history. Next subset, U.S. and NATO. Russia and China oppose further NATO expansion and call on the alliance to abandon Cold War approaches. Beijing understands and supports Russian proposals for the formation of long-term security guarantees in Europe. They oppose the formation of closed block structures and opposing camps in the Asia-Pacific region and remain highly vigilant about the negative impact on peace and stability of the United States' Indo-Pacific strategy. In both, in particular, both sides are seriously concerned about the establishment of the AUKUS, A-U-K-U-S, partnership among the U.S., U.K., and Australia. Moscow and Beijing are urging Washington to, ab- Washington to abandon plans to deploy ground-based, intermediate-range, and short-range missiles in Europe and the Asia-Pacific region and will strengthen coordination on this issue. The parties also condemn the withdrawal of the United States from a number of international treaties, the denunciation of a number of important international agreements in the field field of arms control by the United States has an extremely negative impact on international and regional security and stability. Next subset, international relationships. Moscow and Beijing are deeply concerned about the challenges in the field of international security and believe that no state can or should ensure its own security separately from the security of the rest of the world and at the expense of the security of other states. They confirm firm mutual support in matters of protecting their fundamental interests, state sovereignty, and territorial integrity. Moscow adheres to the One China principle and opposes Taiwan independence in whatever form. Russia and China intend to oppose the interference of external forces in the internal affairs of sovereign countries under any pretext, oppose the so-called color revolutions, and will increase cooperation in this matter. All nuclear powers should abandon the Cold War mentality in zero-sum games, reduce the role of nuclear weapons in their policies, withdraw nuclear weapons deployed abroad, exclude the unrestricted development of global missile defense. Moscow and Beijing oppose attempts to turn outer space into an arena of armed confrontation and are calling for negotiations to start as soon as possible to conclude a multilateral treaty to prevent the placement of weapons in outer space. Commitments by countries not to be the first to place it should complement but not replace a legally binding agreement. Russia and China stand for a multilateral trading system based on the central role of the World Trade Organization and against protectionism. They are also opposed to creating new barriers to international trade under the pretext of combating climate change. Final subset. Principles of democracy. Moscow and Beijing are unanimous that democracy is a universal human value rather than a privilege of a limited number of states. There is no one-size-fits-all template to guide countries in establishing democracy. A nation can, can choose such forms and methods of implementing democracy that would best suit its particular state based on its social and political system, its historical background, traditions, and unique cultural characteristics. It is only up to the people of the country to decide whether their state is a democratic one. 
attempts by individual states to impose on other countries democratic standards are in fact an example of trampling on democracy and retreat from its spirit and true values. The defense of democracy and human rights should not be used as an instrument of pressure on other countries and interference in their international affairs. All states must follow the basic principles in the field of human rights, but due to national specifics, it is necessary to correlate the universality of human rights with the real situation in a particular country. Russia and China stand for equal rights to control the internet and consider unacceptable any attempts to limit their sovereign right to regulate and ensure the security of its national segments. Wow. Well, in closing out, what can I say except that um, this obviously flies totally in the face of your Anglo-Land's six E's of racism, expansionism, extermination, expropriation, extraction, enslavement, and evangelism. That is why I say that the Ukraine war is a, a real tipping point in countries now like India, and other countries are coming out, and, and Pakistan and, uh, and are coming out and saying, we're sick of this. We are sick of the 60s of racism. This is Jeff J. Brown signing out. Thank you. China Rising Radio Sign to Land and China Tech News Flash signing out. Please make a contribution to all of my hard work. Thank you.